Nobody was trying to shut down vodka or Smirnoff. That wasn't a thing. I don't know why I said vodka, because that's a very blanket term. But nobody was calling up Jack Daniels, leaving all these different threats. You're going to lose your license. And probably your life. What is going on? How's everybody doing? I look like the exact opposite of what Charlie Brown would look like. He's got the brown and yellow jammy. I guess I got purple and blue or like a dual shade of... Basically, here's the deal. My recent neighbor has got this pool that he just built. I don't know why he decided on building it for the winter, but I figured I would jump in, but I didn't know that what he did was he was trying to experiment and he had saw the picture that I posted in regards to the black pool and you know, the black water just looking super sexy in that guy's backyard. I think he was attempting to do that. See, this shirt was originally this color down here, but I went to jump in and I forgot that my shirt was on. So halfway through the jump, I managed to backtrack and this is what ended up happening. That, that's a fun story. That's originally how tie-dye was made. They would essentially take a white shirt, wrap it up, twist it, and dip it in all the crazy shit. That's, maybe it's that I'm getting old and it's the small things in life that matter. Or maybe that's not why. What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm not gonna be doing a review. I actually wanna cover something that I think is very, very important. I was just on the show this morning. We were talking about just random shit. You know, we were talking about deaths in the family. We were talking about random other vaping peripherals and stuff like that. But there was something that came up that I think is very, very much worthy of a whole video. I was gonna go live and do this, but it doesn't quite have the same view count is when I record something and then I put it up than if I do something live and put it up. Probably because of all the dead space of when you're doing live and you're responding to people in the comments. It just, it takes too long to go over. Anyway, there's something I wanted to cover. I know right now with all the shit going on FDA, this is just jumping off. Like this is popping off everywhere. You know, everybody's popping bottles. Some people are throwing bottles on the ground. There's basically a riot outside. A lot of vapors are up in arms and pissed off about this whole situation. But I guess this is like how I am as a person. I take something negative and then I flip it and then I use that as a positive. Biggie said it, turn negative to positive. I'm pretty sure it was Biggie. Might be somebody else. Doesn't really matter. It's not about Biggie at this point. Anyway, I digress. Here's the deal. FDA right now has got this whole jammy going out where they're trying to tell the five big companies that are a majority of what we got going on right now, you know, you got Jules, Blues, all those other pod-based systems that are at a 7-Eleven saying, listen, I want you to put something out there in regards to stopping kids that are minors from buying this. The problem goes a little bit deeper than that. I don't necessarily think that FDA is gonna be going after like what we do, hobbyists, drippers, tanks, box mods. I think that is something that is coming later on down the road. Right now, it's a matter of all these companies because all these kids are talking about jeweling and maybe they're not anymore. Maybe that's something from six months ago. But the point is, is that you don't hear about anybody with a smoke tank inside of a classroom blowing clouds. Like, that's not something you hear about. You hear about those small, stealthy devices. And I, I've never been a huge fan of pod based systems, especially the closed ones. Open ones, I could get by just because you could use your own juice. So here's my argument. I think the FDA right now is focusing fire on them because I, I don't think it's right. The company should not be responsible for other retail establishments carting people. That should be up to the retail establishment. Think about when we were kids, right? Like we did stupid shit. That was just like your parents saying, you know what, kids are gonna be kids, you do what you gotta do. And of course they didn't approve with what we did, but we did it anyway. It's a part of growing up. And I'm not saying that vaping should be a part of growing up. If we had to pick you know, one or the other, smoking or vaping, I think most people would do the lesser of the two evils and pick vaping. Now, there may be some people that prefer smoking. I'm not gonna get too far into that because that is just something I don't wanna touch base on. However, what I do wanna touch base on is something real simple. If you go outside of your local 7-Eleven, Circle K, wherever you're at in the United States or even around the world, look at the ground outside of 7-Eleven or whatever the retail establishment is. Tell me what you see. Instead of cigarette butts, what are you gonna see? Little rectangular plastic pieces of cartridges. Okay, that's a problem. Right now, and I'm not trying to be Mr. Go Green, by all means, if anything, I'm trying to be Mr. Clean, as you can tell by the top of my head. You hear a lot of people talking about the plastic bag dilemma. You hear a lot of people talking about anti-straw laws. <laughs> 
anti-cup laws. Basically, they want you to drink out of something that's paper. And last time I checked, paper is not waterproof. Unless you put that like weird wax shit on it. But could you imagine buying that at like a retail establishment where their air conditioner is not working and you got to take the milk jug out of whatever it was in, the refrigerator, and the handle breaks. Now you got milk all over the floor. No, because it's wax, it melted. You don't get it? If I have to explain the joke to you, it's irrelevant. So anyway, let's go back to that. So when you look at the ground, all you see are these plastic cartridges all over the place. This is something that's worth mentioning. Someone had said that it's easier to use pod-based systems, that's why more people do it. Well, if you go back to the majority of the vapors and now, when we started vaping, we didn't have pod-based systems. The closest we were gonna get to a pod-based system is like an Ego AIO, which was basically a stick with a tank on the top, you put a coil in, you're good to go. Super small, super compact. Now, it's become a part, and this is really designed for closed bod systems. I'm not saying that I've never seen a Surin Air cartridge or a drop cartridge, I don't think I've ever and drop cartridge on the ground. But primarily, you'll see the closed pay systems because what do you do? You go into whatever it is, your retail establishment, you get what you got, you take your old one out, you throw it on the ground. Now, of course, that has to do with the human being that's throwing it on the ground, but the proper thing would be is to recycle it or throw it in the trash can like any other person in the world. But let me just play the devil's advocate and say, okay, let me be that guy right there with the cartridge. Okay, fine, this is easy. I'm just gonna throw it on the ground right now. You're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. And in order for you to fix that and make it so it's easier to clean up this world, so to speak, they should have some type of recycling program. This is what I feel should be done, is all companies across the board, first off, should be carting everybody that walks through the door. There should never be a point where someone walks into your store and you don't card them. Do the right thing, like there's laws. I understand that people wanna break those laws and some people don't agree with them, but they're there for a reason and we have to abide by them, especially given the situation of all the warning letters that the FDA has released to all these companies that are selling to minors. That is an issue, right? It's also more of an issue to me, other than that, that's not even that important to me. What's important to me is, well, there's a couple things. How much shit is on the ground? Right, like how hard would it be for a company or someone that's selling pods to say, listen, give me back your old pod and you got a bucket or whatever and you give them 10 cents off, five cents off, 20 cents off and then they're able to recycle that pod or you could do whatever you want with it and then to fix that problem. Again, I'm, don't take this like I'm trying to be Mr. Go Green, I'm not. I'm just saying that when you look outside, if vaping is becoming more relevant, more people that were smoking are now vaping, instead of all those cigarette butts you're gonna see on the ground that recycled a whole lot faster, not recycled, the generated a whole lot faster than what plastic and a little cartridge is going to do. Guys, that's an issue. It's also an issue is when, let's just say, let's take whatever. Rhode Island, as an example, 18 years old to smoke cigarettes, right? Fine, whatever. So you're smoking cigarettes, you're 18 years old. Now they decide on passing a law where you gotta be 37 years old. Well, that's not gonna work. Well, if they did it, let's just say 21, because that's what it is in Jersey now. What happens is now those people that were already vaping when it was perfectly legal at their age, for those two, three years for that generation, they're all going to be breaking the law and vaping, right? Like, the, again, we're just, putting this on the table, okay? So now with those people that are underage by that state's minimum law requirement are now vaping is the exact situation that we're in right now. It's different if you're saying, okay, we're gonna allow, I hate saying this, but we're gonna allow minors to vape, but you can't do it in school. I'm not saying that is okay. You have to understand what I'm saying to you right now. I am saying that those kids that were able to vape before are now not able to vape due to the law and how it is. So what is their option? Either have their friends, right? Because let's be honest here, have their friends buy the shit and then they get it. It's the same way when we went to parties as younger kids, you know the deal. I don't need to break that down for you. Now he's got his friends buying it, right? But he's still underage and he's still vaping. Are you trying to make it so they go from vaping to smoking cigarettes? Because 
if someone vapes now and they're vaping nicotine, right? Like they've grown to love that. I'm not going to get into the addiction portion. That's not something I'm going to cover. And I don't recommend you to leave a comment about addiction of nicotine in the comments because it's probably going to get deleted. The problem is, is that those people now can't get vaping legally. So what is the option? have someone else get it. That's the same predicament we're in right now. I definitely feel that it's not on Jewel. It's not on Blue. I feel it's on the companies that are taking the first side and the first interaction with the consumer and not doing the proper thing. I feel that if you get a warning for serving to a minor, fine, you get one slap on the wrist. One. Number two, that's it, you're done. For six months, you can't buy anything vape related. You can only sell what is in your store. How many times and how many months do you think that's gonna happen before other people start realizing, shit, I, all I got is Q-tips and battery wraps. You're not gonna be making any money at all. So it's going to behoove you to make sure that you follow the laws and the guidelines that are set for you to make sure that you're selling to the proper age. Because that's where the problem lies. Where the story really starts to take a turn is how much of those cartridges are gonna be on the ground in 20 years, in 30 years. Are they gonna be all over the place? That's an issue, that is. So how do we get that now? You know, I was watching a video about recycling on something about the garbage and we're gonna be, in 2030, we're gonna be so consumed or 2050 that the garbage is gonna be basically all over the world and contaminating the ground and killing all the fish and there's gonna be more garbage in the ocean than there is fish even though we can't see how many fish are so deep down in the ocean. Like all this other yippity yap. But you know me, when I start going on YouTube, I just keep going, right? So I get that argument. I do, but what is going to happen to all the cartridges now? The argument is, as people always say, well, if I just stop doing straws right now, and I'm not saying you need to stop using straws, like, just grab the can. Not, nothing screams class like going to a restaurant and saying, let me get a wine bottle and just popping the cork and just drinking it straight out of the bottle. There, I don't know if there's anything classier than that. Maybe getting a Coca-Cola at a real nice restaurant, you pop the top, Instead of pouring it in a glass, you just slurp it up like you're drinking soup. Hate those fucking people. Learn how to drink your milk after your cereal, right? Like, like there is no need for you to make that kind of noise as you're sipping that milk. If there's that little bit of milk left in the bowl, pick up the fucking jug and drink it. Like, Jesus Christmas, you can't be that thirsty. I understand that the milk tastes that delicious, but let's move on. Let's focus fire on more milk, you know? <laughs> Way off a of track here. So, but the problem is, is, is all the cartridges are on the ground. That's my issue. Again, I keep digressing, but the thing is, they said one person is not gonna matter. It's not, we have to do it as a collective thing. I'm not saying we have to destroy plastic bags, but there's still countries to this day that don't know what to do with recycling of plastic to, you know, whatever, recycle it or reuse it. But they are working on this whole technology. I don't want to come all corny like, that's not my goal. But they're working on this technology right now, which is basically like a bead style. And it's more biodegradable than it is plastic, which is a good thing. So that means if you throw a bag out the window, it goes away, just like vanishes overnight with rain. So if you get like a leaky iced tea in your bag, well, that's it. You just lost your iced tea and that milk jug made out of wax. This is really just a rant, I guess. There, there's just a lot of other things that I feel are more important. And when people use the argument that, you know, listen, it's easy, it's not hard to use a closed-based system, I'm not arguing that at all. You can use the same argument and say that most people that are vaping think it's easier to go back to smoking because all you do is you buy the pack, you open it up, and you smoke it. Think about when we were kids, there was no companies out there that were trying to shut down Marlboro or Newport. Like, that wasn't a thing. Even though Oh, kids were smoking. I, I think a majority of people that are watching this are my age group probably started smoking younger and I'm not saying that's okay. I, I'm saying it's the exact opposite of okay, but that's what we did, right? But you didn't hear anybody saying, oh, listen, let's shut down RJ Reynolds. Let's do it. You know, maybe, maybe that was a thing. Maybe we just didn't know about it and it's not as publicized as it is today because we have the internet. What about, what about drinking, right? What about all those parties you went to growing up? They had liquor there. Nobody was trying to shut down vodka or Smirnoff. That wasn't a thing. I don't know why I said vodka, because that's a very blanket term. But nobody was calling up Jack Daniels, leaving all these different threats. 
That wasn't a thing. Shit, if anything now, the liquor's more promoted than anything. You could smoke a cigarette and drive. You could vape and drive. The worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna have sticky windows and lots of vape inside your car. You open the window, all the vape goes out, you take a Windex or a paper towel, wipe the windshield, it's all clean. With liquor, not so much, man. You can't get in a car and start sipping on 40s like it's 1993. That's not gonna be an option because, well, you're gonna lose your license and probably your life. We're just keeping it real. There's a lot of other things that are very, very much important, not just the removing of these pods. And I don't want to speak too much on the law because I'm not that diverse in it to give you direction about what to do and what not to do. I do know right now where we're at with the FDA, there's not really much that congressmen or senators will be able to do. The only authority at this point is the president of the United States that could say, mm -mm, nope. Not today. I think. I mean, I may be wrong, but that's why I don't want to give you any information because I'd rather give you no information than give you information that is totally inaccurate. And then you're like, oh, well, Jay Hayes on YouTube said they should have wax papers. I, I never said that. Nope. They should have wax Q-tips. Actually, they do. It's once you stick it in your ear to clean it. Let me get back on track here. The closed pod based systems, it really boils down to the retailer. Now for Juul and all these other companies that are getting all these things from the FDA, say, listen, you got to do this, you got to do this. The way that I understand it is they keep submitting things. There's only so many things that they could do to stop it, right? Like they just passed this whole thing now where they're actually, oh my God, what was it called? Right to bear vape? No, that's not it. That's definitely not it. They just passed a thing where they can actually FDA launched advertisement. I saw this when I was half asleep. Uh, but they passed this thing where they can promote on ads of vaping or whatever on YouTube, all over the internet, Facebook, Instagram, to where they tell you about the side effects of vaping and the chemicals that are in vaping. Which automatically most people are going to see that don't know vaping and think that vaping's worse than smoking. You don't see that many anti-smoking things on TV unless of course it's for promoting something like Chantex or Chantrix or Chiclets, Nicorette gum. These are all things where they're going to talk about smoking and the negative side effects. Well, if you could have nicotine in a gum, why can't we have nicotine in a juice? I understand FDA wants to regulate that. I'm all about that. But don't take away something that we love. They're, we're not hurting hurting anybody. And if we are hurting ourselves, isn't that our right? It's not like we're blowing off our own fingers and leaving them all over the parking lot for people to pick up. That's my life. That's my finger. What I want to do with my fingers, whether I want to stick it up or stick it in my ass, that's my prerogative. There should be no one to tell me, listen, you can't do that because, well, the ants are eating too much human flesh. That's not, that makes absolutely no sense. What should happen is these retailers should offer some type of buyback, just like on old plastic bottles where you would drink water and it would say five cents, you know, 10 cents. I don't think they're 10 cents, but you know, on the bottom of pans and shit, it, it used to say that. I, I, don't, I don't think anybody does that anymore, probably because we've given up on recycling. <laughs> but there used to be a thing on the bottom of glass and plastic say, listen, you get a penny. And you would get those bums and walk around the garbages and take the shit out and try to recycle it. There should be no reason why we can't offer some type of buyback for jewels, which in turn goes back into the IDing of the person that's trying to flip it to get a little bit of money back. These are all things that should be taken into consideration. Again, there should be regulations. I don't feel that Jewel and all these other companies should be highly scrutinized for the underage vaping because that really boils down to the stores. Now I get it that their friends could buy their shit for them. I understand that. And there's not very many arguments I have against that. That's just the way that it's going to be. It's the same thing with drinking or, you know, in certain states where you have legal things that are guided. You know, listen, you can't buy more than this and that's it. And you come back in a month and you can buy this again. Why not do that with Jewel? Why not do that? Right, so now uh, go even a step further, and I think anybody that's vaping now and is very passionate about that would, would not have a problem with submitting some kind of type of number that you get that links you, like a DEA number that links you, or not DEA, FDA number that links you to buying jewels. So now, whatever, this guy is clear, he's got it, he's of age. That's going really far out there, man. I mean, that's. <laughs> I'm just saying that there's other things to do aside from remove the thing that's removing toxic shit from our life. The same way 
that it's toxic on the ground when someone throws that cartridge out. There's things that we could do to make it better. So without all of us playing our role in part, what have you done to keep it real?